Let's talk about Trump derangement syndrome. Remember the last time Trump ran for the presidency and while he was president, he was critical of NATO countries. He said the other members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation, specifically the European nations, were not spending enough on their own defence. They were seeking to rely instead on the US. Now, he used his usual colourful language and the media and his political critics said he was undermining NATO. But the opposite was true, of course. His rhetoric and his threats worked. NATO countries boosted their own defence spending by up to $50 billion, and therefore NATO was stronger, not weaker. In fact, it's a moot point to ask whether Russia's Vladimir Putin would have invaded Ukraine if Trump was still in the White House. He took Crimea when Barack Obama was president. He seemed to wait out President Trump then invaded and tried to take the rest of Ukraine once Joe Biden was president. Anyway, this is all important background to the latest outbreak of Trump derangement syndrome. It was triggered by these typically wild comments on the campaign trail over the weekend. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay, you're delinquent. He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. Yeah, now again, instead of accepting the obvious intent of this invective, that is that European nations need to lift their game rather than just rely on the US, that NATO needs commitment from Europe, not just from Washington, much of the media and political commentary simply demonises Trump and pretends the opposite meaning. It is an invitation to Russia and its President Vladimir Putin to expand the boundaries of his war in Ukraine. To have a former American president say that he would encourage Russia to invade any NATO ally that's not at 2%. Mm -hmm. Uh, is beyond reckless. It's despicable. Do Donald Trump's comments put soldiers on the ground in Ukraine at risk? Yes. Look, this stuff really is amusing, isn't it? Do they really take voters for fools? Do they think that people don't really understand what Trump is saying so they can get away with this sort of hysteria? But I love this. Have a listen to our own ABC today talking to a former NATO Deputy Secretary-General and trying to pretend this threatens the very presence of the US in NATO. What does a Europe without US security guarantees look like? Well, first of all, I don't think that uh, Europe will have to do without US security guarantees. I don't think, despite Trump's uh, wild words, that he would actually withdraw or could withdraw the United States from uh, the alliance. Yeah, so much for the fear-mongering from the ABC and the broader left. What they pretend Trump might do actually won't and can't happen. That was made clear at the outset. And it gets better in this interview. Listen to a bit more. Despite the demonisation of Trump, it's clear that his argument is absolutely right. NATO's European nations must do more. Donald Trump can do a lot of damage, and it does require the NATO allies in Europe to step up, therefore, uh, in support of their own defence. Yeah, the takeout from this is that not only is Trump's goal the right one, but his invective helps to deliver it. Unorthodox and abrasive language, we all know that. I called it wild at the start, but it's effective. I think we all get that too. So why does the media pretend otherwise? Why do they take voters for mugs? Have they learned nothing from their Trump derangement syndrome over the years? I'll have more on this later with Kristen Tate.